morning, folks. Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. So we have a very quick tropical update to go over here, and things have gotten spicier by the day. We're now looking at a 60% uh, chance of development here within this area that we're looking at right now. I'll almost even call this a little cone of uncertainty. There are a number of things that I've noticed with this that pique my interest in regards to where the track is going to go. So while right now it mainly looks like Florida could be a point of interest along with Greater Antilles and also parts of, let's say, even the Bahamas and even maybe the Caribbean as well, like I'd say maybe even Hispaniola, Cuba could be a point of interest. I wouldn't rule out the Gulf Coast states just yet. There are a couple of factors with this that really uh, have me scratching my head as to where this is going to go. So we're not really going to waste too much time here. We're going to kind of jump into things. And what we need to pay attention to right now is, of course, the wind shear towards this region. Right now, we still have a formidable amount of wind shear. But as we've been talking about before in recent tropical videos, this is going to weaken. And look what happens as we get towards 96 hours out. All those reds and oranges are gone. And even some of the greens are kind of diminishing at this point. There is some wind shear that could play a part in helping to slow the storm down possibly, but even as we go further along here, it does look like this only improves over towards this region in regards to tropical development. Because the lighter the wind shear, the better. The uh, stronger wind shear with hurricanes, it doesn't really bode well for it. It can literally tear those uh, tops of those thunderstorms off. And you need those strong updrafts in order for a storm to really prosper. But in any case, though, as we go further along here, one thing that has been kind of slowing this storm down and not really allowing it to develop sooner is the dry air. But notice as we go further along here, you can see that we start to lose that dry air. It's just kind of hanging around more so towards the northern parts of the Atlantic and a little bit over towards the main development region. There's a real bit of a battle hole, uh, ongoing over here between the two regions right now. As time goes on, though, of course, we're going to see this region become much more favorable for development. And I'm really curious as to where this could go. This is off of the GFS operational, not the ensemble. And the track is kind of favoring more of a uh, westward trend here. I don't know if this is exactly what I would expect to happen, but I wouldn't rule it out either at this point. So. It's kind of questionable as to what occurs next here. Also with this, you can actually see the uh, low and high pressure areas right here. And this area of high pressure could be a huge player as we continue to go forward here. What's going to end up happening or what's expected to happen as of right now is for this high pressure area to push a little bit further to the south as we go further along here. It goes off to the south and east and the center will end up potentially pushing it further off towards the Gulf here, which would be a bit alarming considering that this would be a hotbed for development. Wind shear over here is expected to be light as well. Not going to be much in the way of dry air to slow this down. And then also the waters over here are probably at their hottest. Uh, I've been noticing all throughout the year for this region in particular, those temperatures being near about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, about 30 degrees Celsius. So definitely have my concerns if this storm can indeed make it into the Gulf at this point. I do think it could strengthen and strengthen rather quickly. So it could be a potential hurricane on our hands if things continue to trend in the way that they're looking to right now. So looking at vorticity as well, looking for any storms that could form behind this. I'm still questioning what could be next here. It looks like we still have a good bit of energy coming off of the West African coast here. A little bit in the way of vorticity, but nothing super organized. I think in large part, this is going to be due to that dry air loft. But outside of that, I do expect this area to start to ramp up as well as time goes on. Even with the ensemble, I do see a slight representation of that high pressure area kind of pushing off to the south as time goes on. So I do think that there is a chance as we go further along here that we could end up seeing this make a push towards the Gulf. Again, like I said, as far out as we are, there's a lot of uncertainty still to be had with this. 
but here I'm going to assume that this looks like this looks to be the uh, potential storm here. So, like I said, while the traject, uh, projected track right now is kind of hanging around towards Florida, I wouldn't rule out Texas. I wouldn't rule out anywhere in the Gulf Coast, really. Texas, Louisiana, Florida Panhandles, Mississippi, Alabama as well. So last thing we'll go ahead and take a look at here are our ensemble members. This is actually our area of interest right now. I'm thinking as time goes on, I'd probably say the next two or three days, we'll probably see that probably with the two day development start to go up here. And we're gonna see a reflection of that here on the ensemble members as we start to see a low pressure center begin to become more prevalent on here. Now, the question is, again, not just where it goes, but where does this develop? Because the timing in which this develop will also be key to its track. I think it's probably going to be a little bit of a slow bloomer. And I also think that's also going to help keep the storm off to the south here. If it does form a little bit faster, that could actually be a good thing. Maybe not so much for the Greater Antilles and the Bahamas, so to speak. But what will happen is, see, this is our high pressure area here again. The stronger the storm gets, the more likely it is to get picked up by this high pressure area, maybe kicked out to sea. So it might be slightly better if this ends up happening. I don't think this will be the case though, as of right now, of course, this is still pretty variable, but notice as we get further and further along, look what happens now. We're about 204 hours. It's a little bit more than a week away. And notice that how we have this uh, very notable area that's popped up here as it heads towards Texas. I'm really thinking that um, a lot of the model trends right now are kind of favoring Texas. So I'm kind of curious to see how the models continue to trend. If this, like I said, if it uptrends, I would expect it to take a little bit more of a jog off to the north. If it stays further to the south, that could a lot for a stronger storm as time goes on here. So depending on where you are, uh, your impacts may differ, especially over the course of the next few days. I do anticipate among these areas regardless to see increased surf and maybe rip currents as well. So make sure you, if you happen to be on vacation in the Caribbean over towards the uh, Florida coast, I know for some of us school is going to be back in session soon that you are being careful if you're choosing to go out into the waters. But that being said, hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. We'll be trying to cover the severe weather event today. It's been a while since we've been live. I'm hoping I have an opportunity to do so. But until then, you guys have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll see you later.